Now I introduced this in the first lecture, uh, but to just briefly review. The classical signaling paradigm for understanding how G-protein coupled receptors work is as shown here uh, and was derived over the years largely uh, from studies on two model systems. The beta-2 adrenergic receptor for catecholamines like adrenaline and noradrenaline and the so-called visual receptor, rhodopsin, for which the stimulant is really photons of light. Now, the key feature as shown here is that when the receptor is activated by adrenaline or by a photon of light, it changes conformation, becomes activated, stimulates uh, G proteins, leading to activation of second messenger generating enzymes, and those second messengers activate kinases, leading to cellular responses. But as we talked about, an opposing system immediately is engaged, which tends to shut down or desensitize receptor action. This involves a two-step mechanism. In the first step, a G-protein-coupled receptor kinase, such as GRK2 shown here, phosphorylates the active conformation of the receptor, leading to a second step in which a beta-arrestin molecule binds to the phosphorylated receptor, physically blocks G-protein coupling, sterically interdicts it, thereby leading to desensitization. But the exciting thing in this field, which has developed over the last few years, is that an entirely new signaling paradigm uh, is emerging. And that is shown here. The notion is that the GRK beta arrestin system is really bifunctional. At the very same time that it desensitizes G protein signaling, it also serves as a signaling unit, a signal transducer in its own right, which is able to lead to signaling to a growing list of biochemical pathways, some of which are listed here, which in turn lead to a variety of important cellular physiological consequences. This system also can lead to endocytosis of the receptors through clathrin. So today we'll be talking about this new appreciation of the signaling and other functions of beta arrestins and how this can be leveraged for drug discovery. Let's start with the first or core function of the beta arrestins, which I've told you about already. Their ability to sterically block G protein signaling, thereby slowing the rate of second messenger generation. But quite recently we discovered that this mechanism is actually more complex. At the very same time that the arrestins are slowing the rate of G protein activation, they also serve as adapters which can recruit the very enzymes responsible for the degradation of the second messenger. Now, in the case of the beta receptor in GS, which leads to cyclic AMP stimulation, that would be the cyclic AMP phosphodiesterase, shown here. In the case of a GQ-coupled receptor, like the muscarinicholinergic receptor, which leads to diacylglycerol formation, that would lead to the recruitment of diacylglycerol kinase by beta arrestin. Now, this function essentially serves to bring these degradative enzymes into close proximity with those microdomains of the plasma membrane where the second messenger is being generated. So this new information suggests that even the core function of the beta arrestins, the desensitization, is actually more complex than we originally perceived. Specifically, it involves a concerted action whereby the beta arrestins both slow the rate of second messenger generation while enhancing the rate of degradation. Now, the second function of the beta arrestins is to serve as adapters which facilitate the clathrin-mediated endocytosis of the receptors in response to agonist. This core function requires the ubiquitination of beta arrestins by E3 ubiquitin ligases, MDM2 in particular is important here, and that leads to the interaction of barestins as an adapter, not only with clathrin, but with the clathrin adapter AP2, and with a growing list of other elements of the endocytic machine. 